Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and through the internet deliver it to you. Today's message is entitled, Caution, and it is based off of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Let us dive into the Word today. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The church as a whole has a huge image problem. To use an analogy, we're kind of like the popular clique at school. You know what I'm saying? We think we're all that and a bag of chips, to use a phrase from the 90s, right? We, we think we're all that and a uh, bag of chips, and we present ourselves in that way. But the rest of the world often sees something totally different. They see us in a far different way than we obviously see ourselves. Like the high school clique, we see ourselves as being rockin', fun, and necessary. Right? We just have a great old time, and we're, we're just such a great group of people, and we're fun-loving, and, and who wouldn't want to join us? And not to mention, not just, not just to mention that, but we're necessary. You can't live life, true life, without us. You can't go to heaven without us. You can't be a true human being without us. We have this necessary complex. We're necessary. And we cannot, for the life of us, understand why others are not drawn to our church. Now, I don't know what church you do or don't belong to. Some of you may not even go to church. But for those of you who do, think about it. Every church thinks it's necessary. Every church bemoans the culture around it for not thinking it's as necessary as it thinks. And every church is bemoaning the fact that other things are pulling people away from the church. And I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. In fact, we should lament that because the church could be serving such people but isn't because they're off doing other things. So that, that's not, it's not to knock the, the sentiment but we think we're so necessary and can't understand why people don't. Just like the click in high school with all of the clicky popular kids huddling around in a circle thinking they're all that and a bag of chips and everybody should gravitate to them. And when that doesn't happen, they get an attitude about it, right? And for the life of us as a church, we cannot fathom why others are not drawn to us. What's more, we are blind to the mixed messages we send out. For example, we say we're a welcoming church. But let me ask this for those of you that go to church. Who have you welcomed? Not to put any, anyone on the spot, but seriously, who have you welcomed? If you visited a church, have you been eagerly welcomed? I mean, obviously you get greeted usually at the door by the greeter who says, Hi, welcome to our church, hands you a bulletin, tells you to, to feel comfortable sitting wherever you'd like, and then hopefully you don't sit in that pew that somebody evidently owns even though their name isn't on it. Um, but how welcoming of an experience is church outside of the greeter and outside of the pastor, the two staples of, uh, uh, that will, will greet you and say hi. How many people come up and say, hey, would you mind if I sat next to you? As opposed to, what are you doing sitting in my pew? <laughs> 
How many of you have been a visitor in a church and had this really warm and incredible experience? Now, I'm sure some of you may have. There are churches out there that are really, really good at this. But most churches believe they're warm and welcoming, and yet when visitors walk into the church, what happens? No one does anything but looks. Maybe waves high, awkwardly, shuffles on by and goes and sits with the people they know and are familiar with, and the person who uh, has been somewhat invited to fellowship ends up standing alone in the corner awkwardly wondering, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Should I be here? I think I'm going to leave now. How many truly make the effort to go up to somebody they don't know, welcome them, and sincerely try to get to know them? We say in the church that we're open and we're diverse, but how open and diverse are we really? Let me ask this. How much does your specific congregation, if you attend a church, how much of your congregation represents the community around you? Demographically, politically, economically, how many, uh, certainly in terms of age, how many, how much of your church actually is representative of the community around you? Or are you more of a specific type of people than you are of others? For instance, in, in, a, in certainly in, in my context, um, how many Latino Hispanic people do you have in your congregation? How many black people do you have in your congregation? How many women as opposed to men? How many old people as opposed to young? Think about all of the demographics that, w that you can think of. How many poor as opposed to affluent? Do you tend to have more white people in a community filled with uh, a ton of diversity? Do you tend to have older people or, or are you a church that has more younger people and not older people? Are you a church that tends to cater to people of wealth and prominence and status as opposed to people who have nothing to give in the offering plate? These are all important because as a church, if we're not representing the community, community, the whole community with which we're in, how can we expect our church to have any relevance to that community? How can we expect that church to have any effective witness to that community? Now, I know these things aren't typically done intentionally. We, the churches are established when they're established. Uh, demographics change. Things change. People die, other people come, you know, things shift around and, and the communities just become what they are by circumstance more times than not. But how often are we intentional about looking at that and actually making an attempt to reach out to people who are other than us and invite them into the fold? How often do we reach out and make a legitimate attempt to witness to other people? besides the people we call our own. Remember, in God, there is no other. We are all God's children. We are all called to be a part of the church. We are all saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are one in Jesus Christ, as Paul talked about. So the whole church, the church as a whole, has a huge image problem that goes even deeper than how we welcome or not uh, people on, on Sunday. It goes even deeper than how welcoming we are or how welcoming we are not. This past week, another report regarding sexual abuse rocked the Christian world, in particular the Roman Catholic Church. In Pennsylvania, it has been found that there are more than 300 uh, 300 what they called predator priests who molested, raped, and or abused over a thousand children over the course of several decades. 
And many of these cases are, are past the statute of limitations, and so legal prosecution is not even possible. We can't, justice and closure can't even be had at this point. Some of the people who were molested could be no longer living. Certainly some of the priests who were the predators are no longer living. And even if they were living, the law can't touch them at this point. And to make matters worse, far worse, what has the church's response been? Not in this moment, per se, but over the long haul. What has the response been? It's simple and horrifying when you think about it. The response has been to cover up the crimes and protect the church from scandal. So rather than defending the weak, rather than defending the oppressed, rather than protecting those who are being abused and victimized and harmed, the church of Jesus Christ has been covering it up so that it protects itself. What kind of message does that send out to the world? How is that panning out for the Roman Catholic Church right now? Not good. What scandal did they really avert? Instead of a, well, it wouldn't be a minor scandal, but instead of a major scandal, they have now a super mega major scandal. And of course, there are far more uh, amazingly awesome priests who would never seek to bring uh, harm to a single child. There are far more uh, saints in the church than there are predators. And the Roman Catholic Church, to be fair, has done much good for Christ's mission in the world. And to be even more fair than that, it's not just the Roman Catholic Church that has these issues. Um, they're in all churches. The cover-up uh, seems seems uh, to be to be what's what's different here, and and that has to do with bureaucracy and politics, and that there's no excuse for it at all. It's evil. The church should not be covering up its sins, but should be repenting of it and reconciling with those who have been wronged. Yet, so so I I don't want to to paint the whole church under a blanket of of. Uh, you know, straw, but but honestly, it is fair to say that despite the fact that there are amazing priests who who wouldn't harm a fly if they could help it, uh, uh, who who seek to minister to people and do successfully, who who are good uh, shepherds of their flocks, and despite the fact that the Roman Catholic Church has done much good for Christ's mission in the world, all of that is easily being buried underneath this behemoth of an issue that would have been less behemoth had the church done bureaucratically what it ought to have done from the beginning. So here's the takeaway for all of us. Here's the takeaway for us in all of this. We need to have caution and discretion in all that we do as well as in how we present ourselves. People, brothers and sisters, people are watching. They are taking notice to see if we are actually being who we say we are. Now, there is a level of hypocrisy there because they too are probably not living up to who they say they are as well, but that doesn't matter because we represent Jesus Christ, my friends. And people are actually watching to see if we live up to who Jesus said he is. Believe it or not, we are actually representing Jesus Christ to the world. I wonder if we think that as we gather for committees. I wonder if we think that as we gather for worship. I wonder if we think that as we avoid the person sitting awkwardly by themselves in the sanctuary. I wonder if we think that when we behave in the ways that we do that are counter to Jesus Christ. We are actually representing Jesus Christ to the world. We are Christ's representatives. We are Christ's public relations people. What message about Christ are we getting out there? And are we living up 
to who Christ says he is. Paul, in this scripture today, gives us a word of caution. And his words beg us to be wise in all that we say and do. Not wasting an opportunity to represent Christ in our community. We are to make sure that our lives, our words, our politics, and our recreation and recreation bring glory to Christ, not take away glory from Christ. Let us be challenged by this. Let us strive to represent Christ wholeheartedly and honestly. The world is watching, and it is important for us to be cautious and discerning on whose seeds we are actually sowing. Remember, we are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Okay, we are farmers, not the insurance company, all jokes aside, but we are farmers sowing seeds in God's garden. Are we sowing seeds of love, seeds of of compassion, seeds of mercy, seeds of humility, seeds of justice? Or are we sowing seeds of division, seeds of mockery, seeds of hate, seeds of bitterness, seeds of politics, seeds of worldly endeavors, seeds of oppression and injustice? Let us strive to represent Christ wholeheartedly and honestly. Let us not forget the world is actually watching, and it is important for us to be cautious and discerning on whose seeds we're actually showing or sowing. It is, it is our responsibility to be responsible and to be positive, constructive, powerful witnesses to the love that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we just thank you for this message. We we thank you for challenging us to grow in our faith, to grow in our witness, to grow in our identity in you. We are not perfect, Lord. We err in many ways. And yet we are called by you all the same. We are given grace and forgiven by you all the same. Lord, the church, not not just one specific part of the church, but the church as a whole does fall short. We are an, we are an organization made up of people. And where there are people, there are there is bound to be sin. But where sin abounds, Lord, grace abounds more. So help us to hold each other accountable. Help us to stay on the straight and the narrow path and help us to bring your love, which is healing, not harmful. Let us bring your love to those who need it, which is the whole world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Before we go... um, I do want to ask us, invite us to be prayerful for the victims of those who have suffered abuse um, at the hands of clergy people, at the hands of the church, at the hands of anyone. Uh, the, The Roman Catholic Church thing, to put it into perspective, this isn't something that has necessarily happened in this moment, but has been going on for decades and decades and decades. And now this report has come out to share its findings and investigating it. Um, So, so we, you know, to be fair, let us not put ourselves in a place of judgment. Um, there are a lot of good priests, uh, more good priests than there are not. There are a lot of good parishes, and the Roman Catholic Church has done a lot of good in the world, just as the Methodist Church has done, just as the Presbyterian Church USA, Presbyterian Church of America, uh, the Episcopal Church, the Baptist churches, you, you name it. There are a lot of churches out there that have done tremendous good in the world. But they are institutions, um, 
and all institutions, all organizations are made of people, and where people are, uh, sin is. And so um, rather than putting on our hats of judgment and pointing our fingers, let us put compassion on and pray for the victims. Um, if we know anybody who's a victim, be there for them. Uh, speak up for them. Be a voice when they don't have a voice. Be an ear when they need someone to listen to their voice. Um, that's the that's the best we can do. And when we see injustice, when we see injustice happening in any form for any reason by anyone, don't be silent. Do what's right. That is the challenge for all of us. Do what is right. In the meantime, uh, we thank you for tuning in. Uh, I always look forward to having you uh, tune in and listen to these messages. They're as challenging for me as as I hope they are for you. Um, and so I'd like to invite you back next week to listen to that message, which, again, will be challenging. So uh, in the meantime, my friends, you can check out Life-Giving Water mes- uh, messages online at Life-Giving Water MSG, as in Madison Square Garden, Life Giving Water MSG as in message, uh, Life Giving Water MSG dot org. And uh, you can subscribe to the podcast there or on iTunes or Google Play Music or Spotify. You can also subscribe to my t- uh, bi weekly devotional at Life Giving Water Devo, D E V O, D as in dog, E as in elephant, V as in victory, O as in orange. Dot org, lifegivingwaterdevo.org. And you can subscribe for the devotions. They come out on Wednesdays and Fridays. You can get them via email. You can subscribe to them uh, via WordPress. Uh, either way, uh, they are free and uh, and they, they are for you. So please make use of that. Also check out the new podcast that Sal and I are doing on partyonjohn.org. Uh, really, really awesome uh, podcast, a lot of fun to record, hopefully a lot of fun for you to listen and engaging. In the meantime, my friends, uh, thank you for tuning in. And remember, God blesses you so that you may be a blessing to others. Go in peace.